In this FP review, we'll look at combustion and incineration. Now, in terms of information and combustion, you'll find the information necessary for these types of problems, both in the thermodynamics section, and you'll also find others in the environmental engineering section. The information here is from the thermodynamics section. And I want you to note um, just a few things here. Um, you provided, for instance, first with the reaction equation for the stoichiometric combustion of methane. And then following that, you are provided for the combustion in air. So notice here the addition of nitrogen in a molar ratio of 3.76 moles of nitrogen to one mole of oxygen. The other thing to note here is the equations for both the molar air to fuel ratios are provided along with the air to fuel ratio. If you're simply asked for the air to fuel ratio, make sure you use the second equation. The first problem we have is one where you're asked for the stoichiometric air to fuel ratio needed to react with one mole of methane. Again, these are the equations that you will need to solve this type of problem. The equation that we will use is this air to fuel ratio. So in this problem, we're asked to determine the stoichiometric air to fuel ratio needed to react with one mole of methane. Because we're looking at air, then the equation that we will use is the oxidation of methane by oxygen in the presence of nitrogen. Remembering that this ratio, the 3.76, is derived from the properties of air, where air contains 78.09% nitrogen and 20.94% oxygen. So for every one mole of methane, we need two moles of oxygen and two times 3.76 moles of nitrogen. Because we're asked for the air to fuel ratio, what we're asked for is notice this is the mass of air divided by the mass of fuel. So if we have two moles of oxygen that we need, we'll multiply that by the molecular weight of oxygen plus two moles of nitrogen times 3.76 times the molecular weight of nitrogen. So notice moles cancel, we have grams, and we'll divide that by the one mole of methane times the molecular weight of methane, and that is equal to 17.2. So the stoichiometric air to fuel ratio needed to react with one mole of methane is most nearly 17.2. In this next question, this is essentially again a retention type question. And you're told that the operation of hydrocarbon combustion process with an increase in air to fuel ratio from the stoichiometric to the slightly more than stoichiometric would be expected to increase the emissions of, and you're given several choices, from carbon monoxide, VOCs, PM10, and NOx. Carbon monoxide, VOCs, and PM10 are the results of incomplete combustion. 
So if we increase the air to fuel ratio, then we are likely to achieve more complete combustion, in which case the carbon monoxide will be more likely converted to CO2 along with VOCs, and you'll see less concentration of PM10. However, when we increase the air to fuel ratio, then we typically will see more thermal production of NOx. So it's a thermal NOx production, um, thermal NOx. So you'll see a greater concentration of NOx. So in this slide, I provided you with the table of combustion processes or combustion reactions from the energy section of the environmental engineering section. So this provides you with the reactions for the combustion of a number of hydrocarbons from methane to butane and then ethylene and acetylene. It also provides you with reactions pertaining to, for instance, the oxidation of carbon to carbon monoxide. And here at low air to fuel ratios, you're likely to form carbon monoxide. On the other hand, at stoichiometric air to fuel ratios, then you would form carbon dioxide. So let's look at this problem here, where you were asked to calculate the mass of oxygen theoretically required to completely burn four kilograms of propane. So the equation that is pertinent here is the oxidation of propane to CO2 and water. So let's first calculate the molecular weight of propane. So the molecular weight of propane is equal to 3 times 12.01, the atomic weight of carbon, plus 8 times 1.008, the atomic weight of hydrogen, and that is 44.09 kilograms per kilomole. And I'm using kilograms and kilomoles because the mass of protein, propane was given in kilo, units of kilogram. So to calculate the number of moles, we have 4 kilograms divided by 44.09 kilograms per kilomole. And that is equal to 0 0.0907 kilomoles. And we need 5 moles of oxygen for every one mole of propane. So we have five moles of oxygen per one mole of propane. Multiply that by 0 0.097 kilomoles. And I'm going to let's use kilomoles here. Kilomoles of propane. And that is equal to 0.45 four kilomoles of oxygen. And now if we multiply that by the molecular weight of oxygen, 32 kilograms per kilomole, kilomoles cancel, and that is equal to 14.5 kilograms of oxygen. So for, every, for the four kilograms of propane, will result in the consumption of 14.5 kilograms of oxygen. This next problem is essentially a mass and energy balance. It's important to note the terminology in this problem. So you're told you have a 1,000 megawatt power plant that's burning coal, and that coal has a sulfur content of 3% and a heat content of 30.48 megajoules per kilogram. 
told that the thermal efficiency of the power plant is 34%, and you're told that 5% of the sulfur ends up in the bottom ash, and the remaining ends up in the fly ash. And you're asked for the rate of SO2 emissions in metric tons per day if there is no control technology. So we'll just assume that we have no control technology. So I've provided the information here, the relevant equation that we have is the conversion of sulfur to sulfur dioxide. And that's actually also provided in that tab table that I gave you on the previous slide. So this 1,000 megawatts is E out. So E and the energy that we need to supply to the power plant is equal to 1,000 megajoules divided by the thermal efficiency, and that is equal to 2,941 megawatts, or megajoules per second. Okay. Now let's just think about this. Here's our power plant. We have coal entering. We have energy in. We have energy out in the form of electricity, and that's that 1,000 megawatts. We also have heat. And we have fly ash that will be discharged in the stack. And we have bottom ash. And we said that 5% of the sulfur ends up in the bottom ash, and 95% of the sulfur ends up in the fly ash. So if we have 9,000 sorry, 2,941 2, megajoules per second. The amount of coal that we need to burn can be determined by dividing that value by the heat content in megajoules per kilogram, and that is equal to 96.5 kilograms per second. So this is kilograms of coal. Now, you said that the coal was 3% sulfur, so the sulfur in, in this coal, is equal to 96.5 kilograms per second times 0.03, 3%, and that is equal to 2.90 kilograms per second. So that's kilograms of sulfur. In order to calculate, calculate that per day, we can multiply by 86,400 seconds per day, so we'll take 2.90 kilograms per second, multiply that by 86,400 seconds per day, and then so that 0.95, 95% of the sulfur ends up in the flyish, so that's what would be emitted through the stack. And that is equal to 2.38 times 10 to the 5 kilograms per day. And that's kilograms of sulfur. But we're asked for the sulfur dioxide, not the sulfur. So we need to take this value here, 2.38 times 10 to the 5 kilograms per day. And we need to multiply this by 64 kilograms per mole of SO2. And notice the stoichiometric ratio is 1 to 1. We'll divide that by the atomic weight of sulfur. And we will then rest for this in metric tons. So there were 1,000 kilograms in a metric ton, and that is equal to 475 metric tons per day.
475 metric tons, let's just reiterate, of SO2. So in this problem, <clears throat> you are asked for the energy content of a sample of municipal refuse. You're told that it's a 100 pound sample. You're given the composition of that municipal refuse sample, which is actually based on the typical composition of municipal refuse in the U.S. And you were also told the energy value in BTUs per pound for each type of waste. So in order to solve this, it's relatively straightforward. You multiply the weight times the energy composite, the energy value. So this would be 55,000 paper. It is 149,500. For plastic, it is 156,000. Just multiplying these two values. Wood and yard trimmings, 72,000. Glass and metal doesn't combust, so it has no heat content. Leather and steel, oh, sorry, the leather and textiles, 63. Thousand and finally rubber is twenty six thousand nine hundred. We'll sum all of those and that is five hundred and twenty two thousand four hundred. Now remember we had a one hundred pound sample, so this this is in BTUs. We need to divide by a hundred pounds and the heat content or the energy content of this sample of refuse is 5,224 BTUs per pound, or about 5,200 BTUs per pound. This last problem, we will determine the volume of a reaction chamber needed to incinerate to destroy 1,4-dioxane. You're told that we need an efficiency of 99.95%. The gas flow rate is 400 meters cubed per minute and you're told that the rate constant for the degradation of 1,4-dioxane is 3.8 inverse seconds. The information needed to solve this problem is provided here. Notice we've got inverse seconds which means that we have a first order reaction. For incineration problems assume plug flow conditions. So if we have a first order reaction, we can then write that ln of C over C naught is equal to minus KT. So we can use that for plug flow systems where T is the detention time in the reactor. Now we said we needed 99.95% oxidation. So that means that we have 0.9995 is the amount that has reacted. We're looking for ln of C over C naught, and that is equal to 1 minus 0.9995. So that's what's remaining. And that is equal to minus 3.8 inverse seconds times the detention time. And if we solve that, then the detention time is equal to 2.0. Seconds. The volume is 400 meters cubed per minute. We need to convert that to inverse seconds. So we have 60 seconds per minute. Minutes cancel. We'll multiply by 2 seconds. And the volume of the reactor is 13.3 meters cubed. So remember, if you, whenever you see a rate constant with inverse time, it's a first order reaction. And remember, with incineration problems, assume plug flow conditions. Thank you, and good luck on the FE exam.